Okay, Mr. Russ, um, loved your last video. All that beautiful equipment giving you accurate power measurements. Or was it? Um, Alright, this little test set up here. Just um, disregard the LEDs at the moment. Um, and the 1.5k resistor at the moment is only 100 ohms. So 100, 100. You'll see we've put the ground on the other side. Um, this is just so guys without a ground isolated scope can also do the same test. In your case it won't matter whether um, your R1 is here or here. What current goes in must come out. Right? Okay, we'll just stick with that for the time being. Um, so that's our setup, same as before, except we now have our 100 ohm resistor and um, our ground here. So um, I'm just using the one current probe at the moment. Uh, I do have my scope ground isolated um, by way of an um, inverter that's running off of my caravan at the moment. So um, it gives me the option of putting one probe across this 100 ohm input resistor or the centre resistor, our R2. Um, I cannot put both of my scope probes across each resistor of course because they share a common ground. But um, at least I've managed to isolate the scope from our function generator. So um, at the moment, just as it was before, our input current, I'll zoom in to the scope there so you can see it. We have 1.4 volts RMS over 100 ohms, which gives us our 14 milliamps input. Um, that is on what is R1. So, as before, you'll see, well, you may have seen, but we're only running at 600 kilohertz now because. This is where um, conventional power measurements, measurements all fall in a big hole. And um, although you've done a very good job in your last video, we're going to show you a little hiccup. Okay, so uh, we look at, we've looked at our current through our input resistor. Now we're going to have a look at the current value across R2 which once again is our center resistor of course I'm looking forward to you trying this and uh, verifying it for yourself so uh, once again if we zoom into the scope we have 1.92 volts RMS across our R2 resistor which is the center of the two coils so um, or the end of one and the start of another. So we know we're in the same situation and this is how you carried out your power measurements. Um, the way you did it of course is um, current um, and voltage across the coil, current through the coil, voltage across the coil. Power factor was taken into consideration and you came up with what you thought were accurate measurements. Okay, so what we're going to do now, while this is running, and um, here is where um, normal power measurements fall in a big hole. Even though you were taking so much care and your scope with all its magical functions was doing a wonderful job at calculating power in each coil conventionally, um, we deal with the unconventional, which means um, in our search for over unity, we must look at things that aren't taught to us or may not be apparent. So um, what we're actually going to do is we're going to remove R2. So the two coils are then open. We know we've got current flowing through it at the moment, so the current's going in here, being slightly amplified. amplified and then flowing into the other coil. So um, what should happen is when we remove R2 
and we're only at 600 kilohertz for this test remember so fairly low frequency um, what should happen is the current should stop flowing because the circuit is now open so um, we're going to remove R2 all together like so and now we have an open circuit apparently so um, of course we can't move a voltage across a resistor because there won't be any but as you can see as plain as day we now have 1.72 volts RMS across R1 current is still flowing even though the path for the current has been broken so um, what I'm going to do now is grab my magic resistor here the one you've seen in the circuit diagram we're going to plug that into the uh, system come back and have a look okay so um, holding the camera by hand now um, we are now looking at this very circuit we have a 1.5k resistor just to get the uh, voltage drop across the resistor high enough to run the LEDs and an LED two LEDs across that resistor where is uh, one is one polarity and the other is the other polarity so each one will light up per half cycle of our AC wave the 100 ohm resistor still stays the same of course um, having a larger resistance uh, which will be altered once the LEDs start to conduct um, above their 2.6 volt threshold um, we will get a voltage a lower voltage um, drop across our R1 resistor which is still 100 ohms so as you can see here the waveform is also a little choppy due to the um, LEDs conducting which you can see when they start to conduct little bumps there but um, other than that not too bad we have 1.08 volts across our 100 ohm resistor so what we're going to do now is place our scope across our lovely little LEDs here and also across our signal generator which is telling us the overall voltage now you can see where um, we're falling off here try that again okay you can see the current and the voltage is almost in phase so um, our power factor is getting close to um, one which means it's uh, almost a case of um, multiplying our input current by our input voltage our MS values of course uh, in this case it'll be uh, 27.6 milliamps times 4.56 volts so um, some being dissipated over this resistor and the rest dissipated over that resistor the two LEDs and the two coils so once again 4.56 volts across our um, system as a whole or across the function generator so ground and input and we have 2.76 volts RMS across the 1.5 km resistor and the two LEDs which are shining brightly so once again what we're going to do now is uh, remove R2 break that circuit and see what happens to our LEDs and remember we did measure a current flowing through there of 12 odd milliamps that is now gone the LEDs are still going flat trap 4.64 volts RMS across our um, inputs ground and input and 2.76 volts RMS now across our LEDs and our 1.5k resistor and R2 is now gone so now Russ you've got to ask yourself 
where you're really measuring the correct current flowing from L1 to L2. How could you have done that when we can take the resistor out altogether that you were using for your current measurement and the circuit still runs fine? So, um, something for you to think about. You may already know what's going on here. If you do not, I'm going to find a texter, marker, whatever you want to call them. And we are going to do a little drawing here. I wish I had something. How about a coffee cup? That'll do. Like so. Freehand scribble. So um, please bear with me. Yes, that resembles the capacitance between the two windings. So um, our inductors voltage leads current across our inductors. Our capacitors, the current leads voltage, and our resistors, the voltage and current is in phase. So um, we have now removed that, and in this situation here, so that's no longer there, and in this case, um, nothing much changed, if anything, from what I remember, our current actually went up flowing into the coil or into our system which means the current coming out also went up so uh, you can see this on your resistor here so were you actually measuring the correct current flowing into that coil which was L2 in the last test from L1 were you measuring the correct current or did you miss some altogether how are you going to measure that? Well, a very interesting concept because the current actually went up when we removed the resistive current path, which is our um, what we were using as a CVR. Number two is now gone. So now how are you going to measure the current flowing from one L1 into L2 and obviously it is because what goes in must come out. Okay thanks for watching and um, with your wonderful equipment my little experiments here I definitely think we can help each other out but you must learn to think out of the box this is what we are here to do that is what you are there to do with all that flash equipment there's no point using conventional methods to measure power in a circuit that is not conventional. And um, this actually changes with frequency. I'll lift it up to 800 kilohertz. Two point nine six volts RMS. 1.1 kilohertz 3 volts RMS Our LEDs are just about ready to go kapoof <laughs> so um, but yes up and up and up she goes with no path for the current to flow through our resistor is gone which must mean it's now a capacitive coupling so um, give it a shot on your scope and see how you go.